Um, our next speaker uh, wears many hats. He is a passion. He's passionate about technology. He is an inventor, scientist, cybersecurity engineer, entrepreneur, and visionary. He is a distinguished engineer with multiple patents related to mobile phones and operating systems. 90 plus industry certificates in software, cybersecurity, and internet technologies. He is the founder of Rochester, the creator of educational courses like Extreme Hacking, Next Gen, Rochester Certified Cybersecurity Engineer, which is the RCCE, Cyber Forensics Next Gen. He will be speaking on the topic, are we living in a computer simulation? I present now to you, Mr. Haja Mohideen. Um, Mr. Haja, over to you. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Sushma. Thank you, Sumi. Um, OK, I chose a topic that uh, has nothing to do with cybersecurity. It's more lighter tone. Right. Usually, every uh, reinvent conferences, we choose a topic that is something different rather than uh, attack, forensics, cyber threat, and so on. So this is a lovely topic. I, I mean, I discussed with my friends over a scotch. Are we living in a simulation? Okay, the, the answer is yes. Okay, I'm not saying this. I'm going to put all the facts right there for you to make a decision. Right. So full disclosure right here. I'm not a religious guy. I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. That's it. I said it. Uh, so I, uh, I put a small eye there. So this presentation is completely my opinion. So you can make um, any judgment out of it. Right. So here is the question. <laughs> Are we like Neo uh, living in a matrix? Like computer simulation of reality created by more advanced, possibly post-human beings. So the world we live in is real. If, if you go back in 1999, one of my favorite movies, I loved it so much, uh, which, you know, got a lot of people engaged in this simulation hypothesis talk. In the movie, Neo is hooked up to a giant computer simulation. Everything looks normal, you know, in, in the world 1999. So he walks, he works, he eats pizzas, he works with the computers, and uh, he drives a car. Everything looks totally normal. But actually, that's not the truth. He has experience of a normal reality. In fact, he lives in the year 2199 and his body is floating in a tank, right? It is a mind boggling back out brothers when they release the movie. It's like, oh my God, what if this world, this universe is not real? It's all made up. It's all made up. It's a computer code, zeros and ones. It's binary, okay? So the more we start thinking about it, you know, uh, we are more closer and closer to agree that we live in a simulation, right? So what everything around us, everything, I mean, the people, the stars, your computer, your your books and your mouse, the ground beneath our feet, even our bodies and minds, uh, elaborate illusion. What if a world is simply a hyper-realistic simulation with all of us merely characters in some kind of a sophisticated video game? Okay, just, just wait. Okay, it's not a science fiction. It's not some BS, but I will put some statements right there to prove my point. Okay, so this world is not real. So you see at the bottom here with a yellow round circle with a yes, it's, it's my answer to the question, are we living in a simulation? So this is not real. What do you see there? The universe, the stars, the galaxy, the black holes, and uh, you know, the man-made structures and the oceans, everything is simulated like a video game. So once again, I keep repeating the answer is yes. Maybe everything, maybe happening is just a simulation being run on a computer. So who's running this mega super powerful computer? Aliens, you can call them God. You can call them um, uh, operator who's punching some buttons. I don't care who is outside the simulation, but somebody is pressing those buttons and making us dance. The answer is yes, we are living in a computer. But that computer is, is like zillion times more powerful than your average iPad or your mobile phone. Now, so let's take a look at uh, uh, different religions, okay? Um, in Hindu and Buddhism, uh, in Hindus believe 
the universe is God Vishnu dreaming. So he is on a state in which the dreams creates multiple universes, multiple galaxies. So our reality is just a simulation of Vishnu's dream. Everything is Maya, illusion. So this is what Hindus believe. So indirectly, they are believing the whole thing is uh, uh, what we call is, um, you know, uh, uh, run by a, a game. Uh, uh, Vishnu is the uh, is the master operator, right? So, <laughs> whenever we bring this theory, uh, simulation theory, you know, um, the the industry looks at us guys like me as buffoons and fools. Uh, it's, it's a come on, this guy's uh, uh, he's crazy. Okay, <laughs> so when people like Elon Musk, when they come out and they make a bold statement, no, 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 you're not crazy because I believe in that too. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. Any civilization that may have arisen throughout the cosmos have had loads and loads of time to perfect that technological know-how. Come on, you know, like what um, uh, we learned how to fly 100 years ago and we realized uh, the, both, the, the earth is not flat 400 years ago. So pretty much an advanced civilization that's been there more than 13 billion years would have figured out how to produce the most powerful computer, how to manipulate, you know, how to get things running. That, that's real. This is a statement given by Elon Musk, not me. So he continues to say, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, then games will be indistinguishable from reality, right? So we are most likely in a simulation because we exist. Our simple existence, it's a proof but, you know, it's a computer game. It's a massive computer game being um, played uh, by probably an advanced human being or somebody in the future. I don't know. So Elon Musk continues with his statement. He says, this is just a probability. There are many, many simulations. You might as well as call them reality or you could call them multiverse. Right? So we are just living in one of billion simulations created by the entity. Right? So this, this is him. Now, um, uh, make it interesting. So if aliens were to create a simulation, so why would they want to create a most boring ping pong table tennis kind of a game? They have to make it really interesting than what this, their own uh, uh, you know, uh, environment is. So you make a simulation that's more interesting than the base reality of the simulator. So that's what we are. Right, and um, Neil, Tyson, and um, he says, the likelihood of the universe being a simulation may be very high, the physicist. <laughs> and I mean, Elon Musk, uh, him, and many others in the scientific um, community, they use a word, they won't say 100%, they will say most probably, they will lean towards that, 90%, 95%, we are living in a simulation. Right, so the, this is called the simulation hypothesis. So what does it mean? If we can prove that it's possible to simulate a universe, if we can figure out all the laws that govern how things work and um, uh, the laws of physics, you know, chemistry, biology, gravity, electromagnetism, and um, uh, put everything together and uh, then make it work, probably that gets us assumption. Yes, it is simulated. So if you know that it's possible to do something, it's much easier to think that that thing is being done, right? So the answer is yes. So simulated universe, we haven't been able to figure out, we as a human, you know, take the mainframe computer and create a universe inside. We tried, but you know what? We couldn't get it automated. You know, whenever we try to um, do a big bang theory and you know, uh, the helium fu fuses itself, atoms fuse itself in hydrogen, but you know what? We could figure out the black hole. How, how does the black hole get formed with the, uh, uh, the the current exposure, the heat? So, you know, what I'm saying is we don't have the technology. We are not that powerful to create our own mini universe in a computer. But it's not too hard to imagine that some of the creatures outside us, okay, with a zillion power, with the fastest uh, computing cycles can do that. that, that that's my question. So, 
aliens. You can call it God, you can call it any name you like, higher beings or future humans, what, I don't care. But uh, what, we, what would we look to them? We would be like a drooling, blithering idiots in the presence because we are completely like, imagine, how, if you look at an ant, what would you think? Okay, same thing. The aliens will look at us as ants, which are really, really of zero intelligence and dumb and non-creative and so on. So everything in our lives is just a creation of some other entity for, here's the best part, for the entertainment, for the amusement, whatever you call it. Right. So let's get back to philosophy. This is a very, very famous statement, right? It says, I think, therefore I am. What does it mean? It's a, it's, a, it's a famous statement by the 17th century philosopher, French philosopher Descartes, right? And you know what? Those three words, you know, it just launched a chain of reaction with people. And those three words, which basically Descartes is asking, who am I? Okay. He found that he could not doubt that he himself existed. I don't exist because if you ask you a question, who are you? What's your answer should be? You will say, no, uh, I am John Smith. I am. I live in this city. I, li- I, I, know I was born to these parents. This is my work. That's not you. So I'm asking, who are you? How do you define that? Right? So that's the question. So the minute I start thinking, that's me. So what is the right word we use? Consciousness. So consciousness is you. It's not your body. It's not your hands, it's not your legs, it's not your face, that's not you. The consciousness is you. So what the hell is consciousness? Okay, is everything you experience, whether the chocolate you taste, the ice cream you eat, and the holiday you went to, all of these are stored in the memory. Okay, that's that's the consciousness. Okay, so if you take this consciousness and remove the body, replace another body, that's you. So body is not you, remember that. Brain is not you, it's consciousness. So where is this consciousness stored? Is consciousness soul? No, it's not soul. The consciousness is not stored in the brain because you know what the, 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 the doctors, you know, they cut open the brain and try to figure out where this 90 billion neurons contains the consciousness. They couldn't figure it out. They're still doing research on it. Okay, it's a mystery to everybody. So consciousness refers to your individual awareness of your unique thoughts, memories, feelings, sensation, environments. So you get the idea of what I'm talking about here, right? And um, it's awareness of yourself and the world around you. Okay, so that's what it's like. I think, therefore, I am, which points to consciousness, right? Okay, so let's move on uh, to another area. This uh, this topic, Big Bang Theory, is very controversial when it comes to Christianity, Islam, and other religions as well. Okay, so. The question is, how was our universe created? Well, in Christianity, it's like God created the earth, he created the stars, the moon, and um, and go on and on and on and on, right? So in the scientific world, we believe uh, with evidence. I'll show you the evidence in a minute. The Big Bang Theory is the leading explanation how the universe started. Everything started with the push of a button. Somebody pressed a button and the universe was born. So in a simplest statement it says the universe as we know started with the infinite hot it was it's was so hot and um, in which the atoms fused okay to create particles and over the next 13.8 billion years the cosmos that we know today okay that's that's how it was, it was uh, born so this is an amazing diagram okay on the left okay you see somebody pressing a button called on Okay, so before that, there was no universe, nothing. So what happened was the small dot, okay, very, very small, smaller than a grain of salt, a dot, okay, it was so hot and 380 years ago, you know, it expanded, expanded, expanded and create stars, creates planets and galaxies and so on. And it still is expanding. Okay, the universe is still expanding. And the universe we see today is 13.8 billion years creation. And that was all started with the button. So somebody switched on the computer. That's what I'm saying, it's a simulator. And the whole universe was born. So 
If you look at this particular diagram, you have a stages of the creation, right? The minute the button was pressed, and um, in 10 to the power of minus 32 milliseconds, so you had quarks formed. Then you got 0 0.01 milliseconds, you got neutrons, protons, and dark matter was formed. Then about one second, you got helium, hydrogen was formed and fused together to form atoms. Then you got 380 years later, you got the first atoms were formed, terms of matter was formed, then you got galaxies was formed, 300 million years, then 10 billion years expansion, and on and on and on. You get the idea. You get the beautiful chart right there. Okay, that's what Big Bang Theory uh, talks about. The universe was born out of nothing. So when I use the word call, somebody pressed a button, somebody pressed the switch, and the simulation started, and we have the universe like a computer. You have a computer, it's blank, nothing there on the screen. You switch on, then you have your windows up and running there. So where is the proof? Where the hell is the proof that Big Bang Theory is true? Okay, right here. CMB, Cosmic Microwave Background. So what is this? All right. So the Big Bang Theory predicts that the early universe was very hot and it expands, right? So the gas uh, within it cools once, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the expansion takes place. Thus, the universe should be filled with radiation, which we call the remnant heat left over. That heat, you could still see today. That's what we call CMB. And um, the CMB is so cool, it's less than um, uh, the 27.3 Kelvin. Right, so then we're going to talk about singularity. So what happened? So you saw the Big Bang, somebody switched on the computer. And you got atoms formed, you got galaxies formed, stars formed, and universes formed, and so on. What happens after that? Okay, now what happens is, since uh, the universe is expanding, the stars will collapse, okay, into a black hole. Universe will collapse, and everything will collapse and go back to a singularity called zero and nothing, and to completely off. So you start the computer, and you switch on the computer. So in between is your simulation. And this is not me talking, it's a science talking. You can Google it, you can just view it on um, the, the videos on YouTube, and this is what we're talking about, it's called science. So the minute you bring this up, the church will disagree. The church doesn't agree with science. No, 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 it's not. God said he created the universe, he created the earth, that's it. I don't wanna talk about science, I don't, I don't care about the proof. Don't bring science to me, religion is about faith. So <laughs> there's a huge um, debate going on, right? So I'm, I'm not a religious guy, so I only focus on the science. Right, the speed of light. So if, if the whole universe is a computer, is simulated, if I'm saying, that means you must have a bandwidth, right? Transmission of speed. How data is transmitted and what speed is transmitted? What is the minimum? What's the maximum speed? So the maximum speed in the simulated universe that we live in is the speed of light. Nothing can beat the speed of light. Okay, that's Einstein proved it. Nothing can travel faster than 300,000 kilometers per second. That's the speed of light. This is a simulation transmission rate. That's our world, okay? Also, you have uh, the coldest temperature. Nothing can go cooler than 2.7 Kelvin. So that's the universe speed limit. We can get the temperature and the speed of, uh, the speed of travel. So pretty much, it's uh, data being sent to the uh, simulated world and to the outside the world is basically 300 kilometers per second, thousand kilometers, the hundred thousand speed kilometers per second. That's the universal speed of light. Why? Why it has to be 300,000 kilometers? Why can't it be like one million kilometers? I don't know. Maybe the aliens, you know, you know, uh, uh, put a throttle right there. This is the maximum speed you can go. Right. So. I will give you 15 reasons, not my reasons. Um, this was presented by Matt Steve at uh, Vulture magazine. The link is right there, you can, go you can go read it. Now, reason number one, the Mandela effect. What is this? Okay, the Mandela effect is, um, you know, uh, there is there's an even occurred in the past. You remember it very well since your childhood. And when you go back in history, to take a look at it, the even didn't occur. One example is um, many people remember 
TV coverage of Nelson Mandela's death in 1980. Okay? You ask people on the street, did Mandela die? Yeah, yeah, he died in 1980. Actually, he didn't die. He died in the year 2013. This is called Mandela effect, which has some people. Okay, is therefore proved that who was in charge of the simulation is going back and missing the history. Okay, one example, and uh, this, I agree. Mandela effect on uh, uh, Nelson Mandela died. I can't remember that particular incident, but this incident, I remember it very well. Okay, Snow White. So if you watch Snow White, and there's this evil queen, she looks at the mirror and says, says what? What does actually say? And uh, I'll tell you, since childhood, I'm watching it in my memory, she looks at the mirror and says, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Everybody knows that. But actually, if you go to Disney and watch the movie, it's not mirror, mirror. It's magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of the wall? You can disagree with me, but that's the sad truth. But you know what? That's the, somebody in the simulation messing around with this, going back in the history and, uh, and, and, um, and changing some parameters. Okay? So this is the mental effect. Um, you can Google it. There are so many incidences. People share the stories. Now, missing aliens. Right. So we spent billions of um, uh, uh, sending probes through outer space. And we should have found evidence, right? Come on, man. There are 400 billion galaxies. Each galaxy, you have like, what, 300 billion stars? So you mean to say that you can find one single alien, okay, among the, uh, the, the universe, known universe, that we can observe? So not so fast. Alien will, aliens will likely be more technologically advanced than we are thinking goes. So the fact that we haven't located them suggests we live in a simulation. The simulators do not want us living in a computer to find the aliens. Okay, that's... One evidence. So where are the aliens? I don't see them. <laughs> where is the the the, the, the Pandora? Okay, in like Tavata, one of the beautiful uh, aliens uh, uh, character I enjoy. Okay, number three, double split experiment. This, ah, oh, come on, this is a proof. You're living in a simulation, right? Undeniable proof, solid evidence. In physics, a famous double split experiment Electrons are fired at a photosensitive screen through a copper plate, usually producing interference pattern that indicates a wavelength behavior. Okay, now what does it mean? Take a look at this diagram here. Okay, this is the quantum mechanics tool slit experiment. On the left side, you have a board with two slits and you have another board. Okay, and um, you take a photon, a light, and uh, you fire the photon one at a time through the double slit. And you, you place some instruments to observe whether it goes to the first slit or the second slit. Where does the photon go? Okay. And you're observing the photon either goes through this or either goes to the second slit. It's like a bowling ball. You throw the bowling ball and the bowling ball goes through a sorry, not ball, tennis ball. Goes to the first slit or the second slit. Now, when you observe it, it'll go through this, hit the first uh, uh, section of the board or second section of the board. That's what it is. But let's say you're not looking at it. Okay, no human is looking, no instruments is observing, and you fire the photon. So, you know what happens magically? The photons break down as a wave and produce an interference pattern and hit the board. So, what the hell? How can this be? So, what you do is, and um, you place an uh, instrument to um, observe, but don't switch on the instrument here on the second uh, um, the diagram. Don't switch it on. You know what? Magically, it knows the instrument is there, but it's not running. It will produce an interference pattern to hit the board. So wh what does it mean? So this means, um, uh, imagine. So if there's a forest and nobody's looking at the forest and uh, the trees exist or not, nobody's looking at it. There's no cameras, there's no sensors, nothing in African uh, for one small area of the forest. The forest doesn't exist. So that's what this means. So, for example, like the universe is so huge, since we're not looking at it, it doesn't exist. The minute you start opening eyes and take a look at it, magically it appears. So, this is solid evidence we're living in a, in a, in a simulation. And the Schrodinger's cat, of course, he says, you know what? Um, 
we are living in a state in which either when we observe things exist, when you don't observe, it doesn't. So what one example is Schrodinger, the famous physicist, he placed a cat inside the uh, in the box. He didn't place it. The theory goes, and um, he placed a device in which um, he releases uh, uh, radioactive materials at a certain time. Okay, and um, he closes the box. So the question becomes: Is the cat alive or is the cat dead? Actually, the cat is in a zombie state, which means the cat is alive and dead because you don't look at it. The minute you open the box, it'll collapse to a single state called, you know what, the cat is dead or cat is alive. So in quantum mechanics, we call it uh, 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 quantum bits, qubits, and in computing and so on. So what that means is the universe exists when you look at it. The universe doesn't exist if you don't look at it. That's because simulation, they want to save the resources and memory. That's the reason why they don't want to make it available uh, when you're looking at it. So... Another thing is quantum entanglement, which baffles scientists. So what that means is, so you, you, you take a photon and you split the photon using a prism, okay? And of course, um, um, and you collect those uh, photons which is split in a box. Okay, let's say I take one box and I place that box in, um, say, a planet um, Mars. And I place another box in here. But you know what happens is the magically connected, when you open the first box, it connects back to the second box to reveal the state. Okay, state is up or down. So you don't have to go to Mars. You can go to another galaxy, 4.2 um, mil, uh, 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 million light years away, the next uh, galaxy. And you know what? They're still connected. So Einstein calls it spooky action at distance. That means there are so many laws in physics we haven't even mastered. We haven't even touched the surface. So the DNA, okay, this is a scientist in the University of Washington. You got to read the white paper. It's beautiful. Proved that they can embed a malicious computer code in the strands of DNA. Computer code. Can you believe that? Gene sequencing were vulnerable to attack. So what we perceived to be biological reality was in fact computer code all along. DNA is a computer code. So virus embedded, computer virus embedded in the DNA. So the entire DNA is a computer code. Okay, that, I mean, we don't understand that language. The super beings outside the simulator doesn't does understand the language, but they're the ones created it. So why? Why they want to create a simulation? Maybe, I'm just saying maybe, they want, to, they want answers for a problem they have in their world. So what is such as what, climate change? So we could be an answer simulation, maybe future humans, a thousand years from now, they have an energy crisis problem on Earth. And so they create a computer and put all of us, all of, all of us in, in, in simulation to solve the problem. Hope we can uh, solve an energy crisis, a climate change. Okay. Six, if you look at the video games that look like real life with our primitive, I call it primitive computing speed. So... Nick Bostrom, the famous uh, physicist, he said, if we can create a simulation of ourselves, that means we are simulated ourselves by a third entity. So if you look at the games today, they're pretty much real life. Not perfect. Not we haven't reached the end, but almost. Okay. It's, look at this. this. This is a beautiful game, which is real human life. And um, one of the best games is, let me play a video here. It's, Quiet. Oh, yeah. no, I do. So did not fail. Your dead brothers made sure of that. We were supposed to have double the body count. Secure. That is so realistic, isn't it? Right? So like I said, uh, with our primitive technology, 
So remember, this 13.5 billion. So, or the the aliens, or they would have mastered technology so powerful than us. Okay, now what what is Donald Trump has to do with simulation? A lot. Okay, 2016, the one in a million bet Donald Trump will never get elected. He he, he can't win. Okay, there was no chance he he would win the election, become a president. But you know what happened? Donald Trump won the election because the simulators outside they thought like you know what let's actually put a businessman in charge of the white house and see what happens you know so they are screwing with us they're messing with us and we got donald trump elected as the president it's a proof that we are living this come on go to the twitter and you know what he got so many people talking about this theory all right that's one number two is in 2017 okay uh, when he watched the oscar and in the best picture jimmy came out he was a the host there he pulled out and said you know the best picture was la la land all the people celebrated hey actually no the best picture was moonlight so what happened the simulators purposely you know modified <laughs> so that uh, the envelope says la la land all right so um quarks so what are quarks actual computer code embedded in the equation strings of string theory those um, uh, correction codes are called error correcting codes so what what is string theory all right so if you take a molecule like water <clears throat> and you break it uh, to atoms and you further break the atom to quark and electrons so uh, what makes an atom okay whether it's uh, hydrogen or helium or uh you know uh, gold and you know plutonium and so on what makes those it's the vibration so the quarks they vibrate just like a strings and each vibration unique vibration produces a different atom so the theory goes so you got a matter you got molecule you got atom you got nucleus and you got neutron and you got the quark and the quark's vibration the um, uh, you know what um, um produces at different atoms and then you got a molecule right so if you look at this chart you got the down up and electron and uh, muons and all these particles come from this string vibrations now the <laughs> scientist has found error correcting codes in those vibrations so if there's something goes wrong it automatically fixes itself is something like a when you try to download a file from the internet and you got the wrong bytes download for an image automatically the computer uh, sends a request to the server hey can you send me another copy so this is amazing only computers could do that computers can can correct errors the string theory you know has error correcting codes which definitely so prove that we are living in a simulation so why does our universe have to have rules i mean this is something that i always ask myself why everything works so beautifully if i were a character if you create a computer game you you have to put some rules in place for those characters they can they can go back and pick up a gun back and drive a car and so on so if we can figure out all the laws that govern everything that works in the universe and you put it in place and then means is actually simulated okay so for example look at this so why does the universe have a rules in the first place regarding energy electromagnetism gravity and um you know what um uh the force and the movement and so on so why so why do we have these kind of rules okay so everything works in symmetry everything works according to the rule so it, that means somebody has programmed these rules for us to behave and the universe to work okay the rain the trees and the plants and you know what sunlight photosynthesis i can go on and on and on all right so the these rules govern even the the spinning of the the universe spinning of the planets and um you know what uh, the astro I, mean, i can you know what you get the idea what i'm talking about so number 10 it's not actually a possible to prove that we are not living in a simulation this i mean give me a proof you give me a proof and you tell me haja you, you're wrong you're lying okay Here are the zillion reasons I'm going to give you. We are not living in a simulation. Impossible. You can't do that. I'm telling you right now. Every scientist will tell you this is the same 
same uh, give the same statement. They, they, they cannot give me a proof that we are not living in a situation simulation, but I can give you hundreds of proofs we are living in a simulation. Okay, so here we go. It's not actually possible to prove we are not living in a simulation. Is as I said, double not right there. Okay, uh, I'm not saying we are living in a simulation. I'm just saying. It's not actually possible to prove we are not like civilization. I mean, that's a legal statement. You know what I'm saying? How are you um, uh, di dissect it? Uh, so this is it. Okay, this is um, uh, massive computers. I don't know what kind of computers they're using, how powerful that is. My God, we are simply living there. Right, okay. Now, here is a, always ask, me, I ask, me, ask um, scientists the question, Goldilocks zone. Now, Earth, exist in a such a beautiful zone, life is possible, okay? So who put us there? Well, for example, like if we go away from Earth, we will freeze to death like Mars, okay? If we go closer and we will burn up, okay? We'll be so hot. So we are in the right place. We're protected by, you know, magnetic shield and you got the clouds and you got the ozone layer and all the things right for life to evolve. Does it make sense? Why? That means like, but you know what? The simulators have adjusted our hope in such a way life is possible. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's a sweet spot. If our simulator designers wanted to succeed, it makes sense that they place us in such a comfortable zone. Right. Um, okay. So what do you got? Ghost. <laughs> you got to watch the Matrix movie. Ghosts are nothing but glitches in the simulation. Okay, simple, all right? It's a computer code producing something, you you know, uh, that comes out of the real world and pops right there. You see the Ghost in the Matrix 2 movie? Have you seen that? The, 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 the uh, what do you call the viruses show up as ghost. Uh, 13, re reason number 13, bricks of the matrix. So what is a bricks? All right, so, you know, if you have an image, so I want to give you an image like a 4K uh, image or high definition image, 1080 pixels. So similarly, one pixel is the basic measurement for the image, am I right? So what is the basic measurement unit for a simulation in our simulation? So it's called Planck length. So what is a Planck length? It's, a, it's, it's a smaller than an atom, smaller than a quark, and it's actually billionth of a billionth of a meter in diameter. It is so small. That is a possible unit in the universe. It's not atom, smaller than atom. So this is the length of one single plank. Okay, 9.942 multiplied by 10 to the minus 39, not 39, minus 39. Okay, it's really, really small. Right, so simulation hypothesis, you got to read a book. I'm almost done. You got to read a book, amazing book by Rizwan Burke. I read this book and it's fantastic. It's a lovely book. So he is an MIT computer scientist and um, he is in Silicon Valley. He's a video game designer. And uh, he puts his theory why we're living in a simulation. So he says, when, when I'm creating a video game, I will make sure the rules are in place for these characters to evolve themselves, to make their own decisions based on certain, uh, uh, what we call environment variables that I, I throw in. Also, I log what these characters are doing. Every single turn, every single gun that you're shooting, every single lateral movement you make to left or right, forward or the back is being recorded. And when the character dies, I go back and play these log files and to see why the character died, can I put this character in a different, um, uh, what we call as avatar, okay? So for example, in, in uh, one game, the, the, the character was a lion. Another game is, it's an elephant. So his entire uh, philosophy revolves around video game metaphor, right? So let's, I'm, I'm right at the end of the slides, guys, just give me a minute. So what is karma? Okay, karma plays an important role in the simulation uh, philosophy hypothesis. In Hinduism and Buddhism, the sum of a person's actions in this or previous state of existence viewed as the fate in the future existence. So basically what goes around comes around. 
Okay, so how does this karmic uh, component play in the simulation? So if you say I'm living in a simulation, I'm a, I'm a character, that means that, that character does a value. Should I take myself seriously? Should I just go my life? No. So what makes this life meaningful in simulation is the karma. And if the karma says, every action of you is recorded and stored in the simulation, like an event log in a file. Your life can be played back uh, similar to a video game, and your karma decides the next level. What that means is, uh, in a Christianity, if you look at the, uh, the religion, um, the God has assigned an angel to every person. You have an angel monitoring you, watching you, safeguarding you. And most importantly, that angel is also recording your actions in Christianity. All right. So everybody knows that. If you're a Christian, go to church, ask um, uh, your pastor. He'll tell you, yes, you're a guardian angel. Okay. And what are the guardian angel role is to record your actions. So in Hinduism, the same thing. All right. So all your activities are recorded. But in Islam, there are not one angel. In Islam, every person gets two angels, one on the left, one on the right. And that angel, those angels' job is to record your activities of your, your entire life. Whatever decisions you make, it gets logged like a normal file in a Unix or a Linux system. In fact, um, the, the Islam guys uh, pray to these angels, you know, uh, when they bow to the left and the right. So Hinduism okay, records the angels. He Christianity records the angels, and the Islam records the angels, Buddhists records the angels as well. So these angels, what we call is karma in simulation. Okay, we don't call them angels, it's karma. Karma is a log that means kept. All right, so if you look at this diagram, okay, so on the uh, on the left, you will see a massive simulation platform. You've got a bunch of computers, super, super duper computers that, you know what, uh, uh, billions and billions and billions and billions of computing power and storage power to simulate this complex world that we have. On the left is who's operating this huge simulation platform? You can call them alien. You can call them God. You can call them operator. I don't know. You use any name you like, but somebody is pressing those buttons, right? So on the right, what you see is... Um, uh, different simulated worlds are created, different universes are created, and we live in that universe, a character, all right? And whatever we do in that world, for example, let's say Earth, whatever actions that we do, it's recorded by karma. Karma is a logbook. It's recorded and stored. And um, what happens is, so whatever you do, it's in a log file and you die. Let's say the character dies, you as a character, in the simulation. When the character dies, what happens is all those log and activities, recorded activities, stored in a database. And this database, what it does is, okay, you know what? I got to send you back to another life. All right, so I want you to live back into that world, like a video game. So how does the design, the karma decides? Okay, the karma decides, should I upgrade you to a better life after you die? Or should, you, should I downgrade you to a lower life? So that depends on the karma, good things you do. Okay? If you do good things, you go back to a higher, it's a normal, right? So for example, like if you try to, in a video game, jump, jump, jump different valleys, and suddenly you get rewarded. You get rewarded, okay, I'm going to put you on a higher level. All right? So you could put more guns or more uh, um, uh, rewards and more tokens, more gold, whatever it is. So pretty much your karmic action, the simulation rewards you for the next level. This is what Buddhism and the Hinduism believe in. The simulation believes it. Because if you don't have karmic as a incentive, the character doesn't make any sense. I don't mean anything. If I die, nothing happens. So there is no responsibility on my part in the simulation. So that's why it works. So each life passes instantly in death to a new life and the life is the effect of the cause and the whole life. Amazing, guys. you got to read the book. This is the book. Uh, the Simulation Hypothesis Rizwan work. Amazing. Uh, it's a Kindle, and um, uh, it's fantastic. So, Buddha figured it out. Buddha figured it out we live in a simulation. So how did he do it? He was enlightened. So what is enlightened? He knew, you know what, this particular life is only temporary. It's Maya. 
So, you know, what the karmic actions gets you to another life. And this gets controlled, but he didn't figure out who was the creator. He didn't talk to his disciples. He only talks about some of the some of the entity. So simulation, Maya, Karma, and rebirth, and Nirvana, the liberation from cycles of rebirth. So this is something what Buddha figured it out, right? So the, the movies, uh, if you want to watch, okay, one of my favorite favorite movie was Thirteenth Floor. I loved it so much, in which the humans creates a simulated world and they go into this world and come back in and out. It, it's fantastic, amazing plot. And I loved it. I saw 1999 and I was blown away. Matrix, everybody loves. You, you know that. Okay. Truman Show, another great movie if you got to watch. And the latest movie that's like uh, last year was Serenity by Matthew McConaughey. So in this particular movie, a kid, a troubled kid at home, he creates his video game. He programs a video game for the characters to um, uh, 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 to kill uh, uh, his father, uh, adopted father. All right. So I don't want to give you the plot. Just, just watch the game. Watch the movie. It's fantastic. In the simulation hypothesis angle. Okay. And then you got Source Code. Uh, it's an amazing movie as well. Another one is called Existence. So I'm going to give six movies for you to watch. That will open up your horizon of hypothesis. So. I reached the end. So what the hell, Raja? So so what? So let's say you found out the universe is indeed a computer simulation. I agree with Raja, yes. Oh my God, I've been tricked all this while. Suddenly, you know, Raja enlightened me. We are living in a computer. So what should I do? <laughs> Here's the question. Would it change anything? Would it make your life better? Would it give a difference? I don't think so. The answer is no. It doesn't matter. Just live a good life. Have a good, create a good karma. And make sure that you know you be kind to everybody, and um, yep, yeah, and have fun. And um, thank you for the opportunity, guys. Thank you very much. And um, I will see you guys in the uh, Mac OS um, uh, migration workshop. Thank you, Mr. Haja. A thought provoking presentation, sir. Uh, we have few questions. Um, so, if we are yeah. indeed living in a simu simulation, then it should be testable to conclude whether true or false. Yeah. Uh, okay. The answer is um, uh, the scientist and physicist has tried. So the result is always is bogus. The simulators doesn't want to reveal them reveal uh, themselves to us. So the results has been programmed actually as no, 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 you're not a simulation, living in a simulation. So that's the only answer that we can come up with. Okay. So for example, like uh, nobody has proved what happens when you die. Okay, there's no scientific proof. It's only a, a theory of um, a theology. Oh yeah, you go to heaven and so on. There's no evidence. So this is the evidence that's, you know what, the simulator doesn't want us to know what happens when you die. Okay. So the second question is, if we are living in a simulation, then how life-threatening uh, are issues such as climate change, global warming, other emergencies? Um, no, I, I didn't understand the question. Could you? So if we are living in a simulation, then how life-threatening are issues such as climate change, global warming, or other emergencies? Uh, actually, it's, it's not a priority at all for them. If we are just a character in a game, right? So yes, it's pretty much uh, the simulators uh, uh, ask us to figure it among ourselves. I don't care. Why the hell I had to bother about you? Why, why, why do I have to solve your problem? I'm creating a simulation so that I'm trying to study you guys. What the hell you guys up to? How did you derive a particular uh, uh, answer to a problem? So there is no priority. I don't think there's a priority. So yeah, the answer yeah. is no. OK, sir. So we are done with the question and answers. Right. And thank you, Mr. Haja, for an exciting Enjoy. session. Enjoy the session. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye, sir.